This tutorial is a basic introduction to simple harmonic motion. It will focus on amplitude, period, and frequency. The notes used can be found under Quiz 1B, Periodic Motion. Examples of simple harmonic motion include pendulums and springs. Amplitude is usually measured in meters, and it's the distance from the, the maximum distance from the equilibrium. We'll sp first use the example of the mass spring system. I'm going to stretch the spring away, and when I let go of it, you can see it oscillates back and forth, and then it will eventually come to rest because I have some friction set right now. The location where the mass stays at rest is known as the equilibrium position because that's where the force of the spring um, the spring is right at this normal location it's not it's not compressed trying to push and it's not extended trying to pull so it's at rest right there at the equilibrium position now when I grab a hold of the mass and let it go this time I've turned all the friction off it should go and run on its own. So I've paused it right here and the farthest distance is moved and we'll mark that. Don't let it move some more. There. And I've paused it once again when it's reached the far left side, which is the far as it can move there. So here I have the equilibrium position, the far right, and the far left. When I combine the three images, you can see here's the equilibrium, here's the farthest to the right, and the farthest to the left it moved. So the amplitude is going to be the distance from the equilibrium to the farthest point. This is the amplitude. Another place you can find the amplitude is from the equilibrium to the other farthest point. This is also the amplitude. These should be the same amount of distance on both sides, and we usually measure them in meters. We can do the same thing with a pendulum by letting the pendulum swing. Let's see, eventually. The pendulum will come to rest. And this will be the equilibrium position. I'll let it swing again. And this time I'll pause when it reaches this end. And I'll mark that spot. Then we'll let it continue swinging to the other end. And we'll mark that spot. So you can see this was the equilibrium. That's the far right, and that's the far left. When we combine all the images, we get something like this. And you can see the equilibrium right there. So from here to there, is going to be the amplitude. But we also have from here to there, which is also the amplitude. The amplitude is from the equilibrium to the furthest distance away. Now one place students get confused is they sometimes think that the amplitude is the entire distance across. It is not correct. That is not correct. That is not the amplitude. Um, and on this one, they sometimes think the amplitude is the entire distance of travel. And again, that is not correct. The amplitude is from the equilibrium to the farthest point. From the equilibrium to the farthest point. Next, we're going to talk about period. And the period is actually fairly straightforward. It's capital T because it stands for time. And it's a very specific time. It's a, it's, it's a number of seconds or amount of time it takes to complete one cycle of the motion to completely move from one side to the other side and back again before it repeats.
So looking at our example of the pendulum, we'll let it swing. And um, I'm just going to time it and show you. Uh, I'm going to start timing when it reaches the left edge right there. I'm going to start timing. And then I'll, time it, I'll stop timing when it reaches this edge again. So ready, going to start. And it's timing, and I'm going to stop. And when I did that, I got 3.93 seconds. So basically, that means it takes about um, four seconds to go from here over to here and back to there again. Remember that period is the time it takes for one complete cycle, all the way over and back again. Students sometimes get confused because they think it's the time it takes just for one part of the swing like that. But it has to be both parts of the swing. We can do the same thing with the mass and spring. And this time, this is a little bit faster. I'm going to try to get it timing from the time it starts right when the circle gets right there and stop when it comes back in. Okay, and start. Stop. And I've got uh, 1.54 seconds. The period is the time it goes from beginning over to the other side and back again. All right, now frequency um, is measured in hertz and is defined by the number of cycles that the object makes per second. So this is just best done by an example. So I have cycles per second. It's going to fill in the number of cycles and the number of seconds, and that'll give me my when when I divide that, it'll give me the the frequency. So let's go back to our mass spring since it's still running. Um, and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to record the number of seconds it takes for a number of cycles. I'm going to try. Um, we'll do ten. We'll do ten cycles. I'll time 10 cycles. When the hand, so when it starts here, I'm going to start counting. I'm going to start the stopwatch. I'm going to start counting. Um, so out loud, I will count out loud the number of cycles and I will be timing the seconds. So here we go. And go. One cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and stop timing. Okay, now on my stopwatch, on my stopwatch what I got was 14.9 seconds. And then if you remember I counted for 10 cycles. When I divide this in my calculator I end up getting um, oh, point six seven cycles per second. So point six seven hertz. Let's try the same thing with our pendulum. I'll let that move and the highest point is gonna be right here. This time I'll do I'll do ten cycles again. Starting right now. One, two, this is going to take a while, so I'll do five cycles. Three, four, and five. All right, and I got 19.71 seconds. That goes right here, 19. 0.71 seconds, and this time the cycles I did five, five cycles. Five divided by 19.7, I get 0.25 cycles per second, or 0.25 hertz. Frequency is 0.25 hertz, a quarter of a hertz. That means it swings a quarter of a swing every second. So let's see how frequency and period relate. Um, I got cycles here and seconds there. 
we can see that basically frequency and period, they're reciprocals of each other. If we just take the number of cycles per second and flip it, we get the number of seconds per cycle. So that leads us to um, our equations that were in our notes. Frequency equals one over the period, which means one divided by the period. Just take one divided by the period to get the frequency. Also, period is one over frequency. In other words, if you want the period, you just take one and divide it by the frequency. That's how you find the reciprocal. So let's just let's just try to do some examples. Finish up here with two examples. All right, a boy on a playground swing takes 15 seconds to make five complete swings. What is the period of his swinging and what is the frequency of his swinging? Okay, well, the period is the time it takes, the time it takes for one cycle. So let's see if we can figure this out. The time it takes, so 15 seconds for five cycles. That's going to be 15 divided by five. That's going to be three seconds per cycle. And that's our period. Now the frequency, we got to flip that. It's going to be cycles per second. Okay, and that's going to be um, the number of cycles was 5, the number of seconds was 15, and now we got 5 over 15. That's going to be, oh, that's going to be a third, 3, 3 cycles per second. Frequency is 0.33 cycles per second, or also known as 0.33 hertz. Okay, well there's sort of another way we could have gotten frequency by using the equation. The frequency equals one over the period. So we already have the period right here, it's three seconds. So that's gonna be one over three, which is a third. So you get the same answer, 0.33 hertz. Whenever we give you the period, you get the frequency from it. If you get, if we give you the frequency, you can do the same thing to get the period. Let's try another example that will use this um, in a better way. All right, 0.3 kilogram Bob. Remember, Bob's the name of the thing that swings on a pendulum hanging from a string. It starts swinging at two hertz. What is the frequency of the motion? And how long does it take? How long does it take the bob to swing one complete time to and fro? Okay, actually this problem is either tough or easy depending on how you look at it. Because it really comes down to recognizing the units of hertz. Two hertz. When you see hertz, you just recognize hertz as frequency. So that's going to be the answer. Two hertz. There's nothing to calculate. And that's how it's going to be on the quiz and the homework, because sometimes I'll just give you the hertz and say, what's the frequency? And you just say, two hertz. Now I want to find how long, and we're, how long we're talking about time. How much time does it take to swing one complete time? Well, that's another, another word for that. It's called the period. The period is how long it takes. We have frequency, so we can use that to find the period. Just put it underneath the fraction. Um, so the period is one over the frequency, or one over two well, remember, this is this is going to be cycles per second, okay? Which means one over two. That's a half, 0.5, and then this is on the bottom. So now we're flipping it seconds per cycle, 0.5 seconds per cycle. In other words, it takes half a second for it to swing one complete time like that, half a second.